What's up, Team Kesteva? We have another midweek mini for you. Example problem for the PE exam. Let's jump in. This one is obviously structural specific. Um, let's get going. So we have a flexible plywood diaphragm that spans shear walls located on lines A, B, and C. A, B, C. Um, and is subject to a lateral wind load of 320 pounds per foot. That they have noted here, laterally acting in the direction shown. Okay, so it's, you know, forces are moving from bottom of the page to top of the page on our structure. The maximum chord force hmm, created in the diaphragm is most nearly what? So today, like always, we define what we're looking for so we don't go astray. What is our chord force? Our max chord force. And for those who don't know, this problem is pretty straightforward. But if you're not, if you're a little shaky with diaphragms, if you're, you kind of have been, you know, dodging them and think you might know what they are, but you haven't really worked with them too much because they're because they're lateral elements, and that's you know, lateral design can get a little scary for newer engineers. Let's just break down quickly what a diaphragm actually is because it's, it's actually pretty simple when you think about it. So I'm going to draw, so they've given us a plan, or a, yeah, a plan view. I'm going to give us an isometric view. And in green here is going to be our plywood diaphragm. Now we have our loads being applied laterally. And basically it's saying that they, not to get too far into the weeds, but when loading acts on the entire surface of this wall um, and half of the load depending on what the wall type is if it's just wood studs half the load would be transferred to down to the foundation and to the sill plate and then the other half would be transferred up to the top of the let's just call this the roof it's a flat roof then what the diaphragm is doing is um, transferring those lateral forces to shear walls wherever they may be located in your building for this little isometric view we'll just say you have a shear wall at each End. And so what that diaphragm has to do is transfer these lateral forces due to wind. Um, and it does that by actually just acting as a deep beam. So the way that this whole building, that diaphragm would deflect under the loading shown like that for this little case here is shown dashed here. And that then gives you a reaction point here and here at your shear walls. And then the shear walls take those lateral forces down into your foundations below. And then that's that's all she wrote. That's kind of the skinny of a quick little building right there, but that's how a diaphragm works. So if you want to see that in essence, this dashed that I've done here, if you're still not quite seeing how the, well, how's that working as a deep beam, it's really... looks just like this. So we break it down way into statics. You have your forces from your lateral forces. So it's everything just flipped from lateral to like a gravity perspective. You're just looking at this in um, 3D and then this one is plan. So your whole, I should draw this in green for you. If I'm not totally spazzing, draw this in green for you. <laughs> it's not much better. Um, so that's all that's happening is your whole diaphragm is just deflecting to get to your reaction points, which are your shear walls. Okay. Now, like we would do with a concrete beam, you have internal stresses throughout the beam. And at the bottom here, we know that there's tensile action kind of pulling that beam and ripping it apart at the bottom. And then you have equal compressive stresses at the top that's pushing the top together. Well, what that translates to into a diaphragm is that's these forces are what we call our chord forces. And that is what we need to solve for today. So how do we go about that? Well, for our problem, we have a flexible plywood diaphragm, and that's always typical for um, for wood diaphragms, they're always flexible. And what that means, uh, flexible versus um, rigid diaphragms, is that um, rigid diaphragm is, is most often associated with like a, a concrete diaphragm and shear walls, and that relates to you design the shear walls and the distribution of forces through the diaphragm 
uh, based on the relative stiffness of the shear walls. Whereas in a flexible diaphragm, the distribution of forces to shear walls is just solely based on the tributary area. So uh, we are looking for the maximum chord force. It's only based on tributary area. We should be looking, we would know that our max chord forces are happening at our maximum spans because that, like I said, you can kind of count these, this right here as one beam. And then we'll do green. And then this right here as a second beam. So this is like beam one, and this is beam two. And you can think, like we just talked before, at your shear walls, they're basically just like pin supports when you really break it down simply. So we know that the longer the beam, the larger the chord force, if the force being applied is the same, which we know it is. So we need to analyze uh, beam B2. So let's use green from here on out. So beam, I'm going to um, exaggerate it a little bit. So this is B2. And we know that our lateral forces are given to us. That is 320 PLF. And the distance of the span is 80 feet. Well, how do we get that chord force? Well, we know that in order to get chord force, that just equals moment, bending moment, divided by your depth of your beam. And you, most of the time, so you, we use D for you know beam design, but for diaphragms, it's most of the time, this is actually given as like B. So let's not get confused. We'll use B since we're talking about a diaphragm. So B is the depth of your diaphragm. So chord force is just moment in that diaphragm divided by the depth B of your diaphragm. Okay, well, we know we have B, which is equal to 55 feet. That means we still need M. Well, M, we know we can get, just looking at this, acting as like a simply supported beam with a distributed load across it. So we know that M max is just equal to WL squared over 8. So if we plug in, I'm going to leave it as 320 pounds per foot because our answer is in pounds. So we don't need to convert to kips or anything. Times our length, so our simply supported uh, span is 80 feet squared divided by 8. That gets us. 256,000 pound feet, or foot pounds, depending on how you want to say it. I know it's a big number, but don't panic yet because now we get to divide. In order to find our chord force, we get to divide by B. So we have all of our components. We have 256,000 pound feet divided by 55 feet. And that gets us 4,650. 55 pounds as our maximum chord force. Let's go take a look at what we got for solutions. Well, I would say that's most closely associated with answer B, 4,700 pound feet. Eh, pound force, but just call it pounds. And that's all there is to it. Um, let me know if you had any trouble with this, if I did a poor job explaining a diaphragm um, once you really get the concept of it, you're like, oh, this is so simple. I mean, most of the time we think about trying to really get involved with, oh, well, like a building is so complex and there's these shear walls and there's these, you know, drag struts and lateral elements and gravity elements and it can get really muddled, but it's always about going back to the very basics. I mean, you can really mostly break down everything back to statics and that's what we're doing here. We have our diaphragm. And we've shown that basically you can analyze it just as a, uh, a deep beam and a simply supported span. So this may have looked kind of tricky, but if you understand what a diaphragm actually is and the simplicity of it, then it turns out to be a pretty straightforward problem with just maximum moment and dividing by the depth. So that's it for today. Um, like and subscribe. You know, Send it to a friend, send it to a colleague, anyone you're studying with during these these tough COVID times. 
Um, I hope everyone's staying safe and staying healthy. Um, you know, if you have more free time on your hands and you want more videos, let me know in the, you know, in the comments below. I'll try to do my best to get more out. I'm currently actually um, away from my main desk now, so I missed the last week's main episode, but don't worry, I got something in store for you guys. So as always, um, this is Kestova. I'll see you guys later. Bye.